Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I decided to show you guys how I make and pack my press on nail order. So the first thing I do, if I just zoom in, is see what they ordered and what size. So one of the girls ordered fly high in a size small. So I just refresh my memory on what it looks like from my website and I get all the resources I need. So the size of the tips, um, the butterflies, the color, the top coat, everything, the box. And then because she ordered a small, I go ahead and I check what sizes the small is and I lay it out in front of me. So I'll show you guys now how I do everything. Okay, so the first thing is to grab your nail tips. So the ones I'm using are from Macart and it's like the medium coffin shape. So what I do is take them out and I'll lay them in front of me, ready to be buffed and prepped before we start applying all the gel polish and all the nail art. So I decided to not make this video too long and bore you guys. So I'm just going to show you guys how I do the first five fingers. So one hand and the other hand I'll do off camera and then I'll come back to you guys and show the rest of the process on how I pack it all and everything I use. So what I do right now is once I've got my five fingers, I get my little nail stand and I get a handy dandy buffer. So what I do is I take a nail and I buff the whole surface of the nail. And once all the shine has been taken off, I then go in and I just make sure that the sides are sharp. And I also file this bit down because it always ends up having a bit of a plasticky thing sticking out. And there we are. And I, I often just run my fingers along the sides because often the plastic just gets stuck. So I just try and get rid of it with my finger. So yeah, that's one nail done. So once it's done, get my nail stand and I just press it down. And here we have the first nail. So now this is what your press on nail should look like at this stage, all matte. So now what I'd like to do is, with a lint free wipe, I like to take my nail cleaner and just um, clean the nail and dehydrate it. So I often like to basically prep the nails, the press on nails, the same way you'd prep your own nails. That way the gel polish just stays on longer and they last longer for your clients as well. Okay, awesome. So now we're going in with our base coat. Actually, before I pop them in the lamp, um, they have butterflies on and I tend to, what I like to do with butterflies is actually glue them on the base coat and then I apply about two layers of top coat on top so that the nail is smooth and it's not bumpy and the top coat also secures the butterflies so that they do not take off. <laughs> so on my design, these two nails got butterflies, so let's put that on. Right, so here are the butterflies that I use. Let's just take a few out on the stand. Okay, so I just pick it up and place it on the nail. It's funny because you're normally meant to use this wax pen, but sometimes it's just easier to use that glue sec part of it. It just works better. And you just place the butterflies however you wish, however you like it. Right. 
Right, so for example, I am satisfied with this one. So I will be placing it back onto the stand and I'm gonna take the second one. Second one over. Right, so this is what the two nails should look like next to each other. So now we are ready to pop this in the lamp and kill the base coat on all the nails. Okie dokie, so we are now back and I will start by applying the top coat to both of these nails so we can just finish those two off and have them over and done with. So that we're not too worried that we end up bashing into them later. So what I like to do is apply two very thick coats. So I apply one, put it in the lamp, and then once it comes out, apply another one and pop it in the lamp. So I'll just show it once in this video. Okie dokie. So that's one coat. So I'll just pop these two individually into the lamp and we can then start working on the rest of the nails. So the colour that I use is called, um, from the company You Are Sugar in the shade 36. It's, it's a very cute pastel purple. They are tiny bottles. I think, yeah, it's only 7.5 mils and the bottle looks tiny, but the actual product is so good. Like it levels out pretty well last time I did these, I believe, unless they changed the formula. Hmm. They look a bit different. Yeah, it's fine. It levels out really well. I'm pretty impressed with these, not gonna lie. Right, so that's one coat. We'll probably need roughly three coats before this is the colour we want. So I'll come back to you guys once the three coats are applied so I don't bore you guys too much. And then I'll show you guys the process of packing it all up. So here are the nails after applying about two to three coats of the purple. So now all we gotta do is apply the matte top coat on the three nails here as those two already have um, two layers of glossy top coat. So matte, uh, matte top coats can sometimes be a bit, a bit annoying because they can apply, they can start creating streaks and stuff. So I like to apply a, th a fairly thick coat of it, just one coat, but fairly thick because I feel like it just levels out better that way and then I feel like it just doesn't create those streaks as much. It's, it's probably me saying that now, but when I put this in the lab, but I don't come out with streaks, but nah. It's also to do with your um, matte top coat as well, so it's pretty good to invest into a little bit of a better one, because otherwise you are honestly going to have such a hard time. Why have I got little bits in there? Um, trying to just level it out and you'll be wasting tips because you can't send a streaky nail to a customer, so. Okay, so I'm gonna pop that into the lamp and I'll be back with you guys when the second hand is also done. All right guys, so these are the whole set of nails that we've just made. Five of them obviously off camera, five on camera, all matte top coated. So the next step is now to take your box. So this is all entirely up to you. I sell mine in this sparkly long box. So I'm just gonna take it out of the plastic packaging. Okay, so it's open. And I actually by accident ordered a very thick roll of <laughs> double-sided tape. So 
what I do is just chop it up into little chunks. But yeah, so we've got our little ooh, sellotape. Sellotape, double tape gel thing. And all you do now is just press it down onto the jelly tape. So once they are on, I just knit the side. I, know, I always like to leave just a little bit so I can actually grab the other side so it's a bit more easier for me. And then using my little tweezer, I start to find that little plastic thing that you want to take off. And then with your box, you want to place it right in the middle. Just like so. And then press it down because you don't want them falling out by the time it gets to the customer. So yeah, so this is what it looks like in the box. Very cute, very, very cute and girly. So what I do then is apply my little top of the box. And then I apply my stickers on top of the box. So I originally called myself Glamify Nails, but I, I ended up changing it to Glamify Babe because I actually have like bigger plans for this business. I'd love to not only sell press on nails, but also skincare um, and like nail art, like glitters and stuff. So I want to grow this as much as possible. And I don't want to cap myself with the name Glamify Nails even though let's see later on I want to do something else so I just wanted to keep it broad so hence why I called myself Glamify Babe now however I still got all of these Glamify nail stickers that I ordered so I'm still using them up it's probably not the best you don't want to confuse your customer but the logo is the same sometimes they probably won't even realize that it actually says nails but even if they do it doesn't really it might even feel like it makes sense because I'm selling the nails so there we are, you put your little sticker on so that they know that it's from you. And then what I also do is add my little kit that goes with the press and nail. So you've got a little glue, a little buffer and a cuticle pusher. And I always chuck in two little stickers at the back. Just some cute little stickers. And what I also <laughs> ended up buying is a thank you stickers from AliExpress. So what I often like to do is take one and put it right in the middle of this little bag like so to make it all a little cute and then i've got this little pink pony mailer so what i do is put it in along with my little goodie bag and then i solo tape it down and then at the back what i also like to do is I like to get a bit of sellotape and just sellotape it down because sometimes at the post office they like to be a bit funny with it sticking out and then they might sometimes charge you a little bit more just because this little bit is catching on their little like sizing guide thing that they have so in case you're having the same issue use some sellotape so it smoothly go in and out of those little holes that they have and then I also like to use those pink little stickers on the middle of the opening of the poly mailer and then on the front i will be writing the customer's name and address on a piece of paper and i'm sticking it down just because i am still a very very small business and i don't get enough orders to buy one of those like homemade i mean not homemade home postage printers so for now i still handwrite my little addresses and i go to the post office but if um when it starts growing i will be investing into a thermal printer and just getting my postage labels from home that'll be quite nice but until then we're going to stick with our little handy dandy pen and paper 
And so yeah, that's probably the end of the video. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.